Hey friends, today we're going to talk about sauerkraut. And you might be thinking, I don't want to eat sauerkraut. I don't like sauerkraut. That was me as a kid, I have to say, but I have come to love it. And if you're eating a ketogenic diet, a carnivore diet, a low carb diet, well, sauerkraut is your friend. So let's talk about it. Even a vegetarian and vegan diet, this food is for everyone and everyone benefits from it. First of all, it's been around forever. I recently made a batch and let me tell you, it was kind of scary making this because the last time I made it, it was so good. Have you ever done something where you thought, that was so amazing. Um, I, I can't repeat that. There's no way I could ever have that again. And so I'm just not going to do it. I'm just not going to try again. Well, that's kind of been what's happening with me. And what helped that was that we moved and we didn't have a garden set up. Well, we finally got a garden set up and I grew cabbage this year and I made the sauerkraut. I processed the cabbage um, and it's still working. So I did this about two and a half weeks ago and I'm going to share the process in this video with you. So it's not done. The last time I made it, it actually, I processed it and I had to sit for six weeks. So I'll do a follow-up video to this when I go to taste it. I do want to tell you, to my dismay, there has been a drought here in this area. And so my cabbage this time was not as juicy as it was the last time I made it. The last time I made it, I could not believe how much cabbage juice came forth. I mean, it was just this amazing kraut. I mean, it really almost tasted like butter. I remember that that's how I described it. Super, super mild, kind of like butter, and just loaded with probiotics. So that's one of the main reasons why you would want to consume this. Dr. Mercola, in fact, said that in his own sauerkraut that he had made, in a four to six ounce serving, there were about 10 trillion good bacteria. So that's not a very big serving, and there was so much there. So this is not something that you even necessarily eat a lot of. It's more of a condiment. You know, it's more something you put on other things. And we'll talk about that in a second. So the first reason, there's a lot of reasons why you should consume this. But one of the first reasons is, like I said, is it is a probiotic. And now there is so much science coming out around the microbiome. And sauerkraut is such an easy way to work on that. Like I said, it's very diet friendly. It goes with any way of eating. Um, cabbage, as you may know, has anti-cancer properties and those are exaggerated even more with sauerkraut. The other thing is, is that it really aids in the digestive process. So a lot of people will use it just for digestion. Uh, it really helps if you're constipated, for example. And that can be one of the phases that people go through when switching from a standard American diet to a keto diet or a carnivore diet or low carb is that they might experience some constipation in that transition period. And, or even further down the road, you know, it can just happen. And sauerkraut is just a tremendous remedy for that. It also tends to really soothe the central nervous system. That's really great because in this day and age, we, our central nervous system can tend to ramp up and get overexcited. So it's really good to have sauerkraut for that as well. And the vitamin C content in sauerkraut is really great. It's got a lot of potassium too, which is good for the keto diet or the carnivore diet or a low carb diet. Even the B vitamins and other minerals are really come forth and are more bioavailable by going through this fermenting process. When you use uh, sauerkraut as a condiment, you'll do things like put a scoop of it, like a heaping tablespoon on your soup, or you might put it on an organic hot dog or sausage. It really goes well with pork, but it's good in so many ways. It's actually good with chicken too, and in different ways, and people will use it. Let's say you have a little bit of an upset stomach or your stomach doesn't feel quite quite right. You might take a tablespoon for that. Or you might to take a tablespoon before you eat. A lot of people, and especially as you age, have trouble with uh, not having enough stomach acid to digest food and not having enough to digest meat in particular. And so, the, you know, this can really help to uh, encourage the body to produce more hydrochloric acid 
And, you know, a lot of people use bile salts too. And this is just another way, another digestive aid that's going to help. Uh, and by putting it directly with the meat, you know, it's really good in that way. So if I don't love this batch, I will be making another one. So stay tuned in the video. I'm going to show you exactly how I did this. So here are the cabbage heads from my garden. As you can see, we had some eaters, but I'm hoping when I remove these outer leaves that I get good cabbages down underneath. And what we're going to do... So here are those same cabbages with the outer shell removed. Just wanted to show you that they, they look a lot better now that that outer pieces are gone. Now I have all of my cabbage heads just sitting in water. What I'm trying to do is just get any, like if there's little insects on the inside or anything, any bugs or anything, just to get them, they will come out if you uh, put them in water. And I wanted to just share too that at least part of my sauerkraut will have caraway seeds in it. The last batch I made, which was a few years ago before we moved, turned out so awesome and it had caraway seeds in it. And I think that these provide a kind of natural sort of preservative type effect. And I really love the flavor. So I don't know if I'll do all of it that way. Uh, it was super yummy. Definitely gonna do at least half with the caraway seeds. Now I'm ready to turn the cabbage heads into slaw. What I'm gonna do is first, I'm going to cut them in half. I will actually quarter these. And you see here, right here, this little line, I am going to get rid of that piece. We're not going to ferment that piece or include it in the sauerkraut. And then I've also got my blade ready, which you can see here. This is a Cuisinart. And some people really believe that you need to do make your slaw by hand, but I'm going to make it in my Cuisinart for the sake of saving time. Here are all of my cabbage heads that have been quartered and I've taken the core out and they are now ready to turn into slaw, which we will use for. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tablespoon of salt and I'm going to put it on this part of the coleslaw that I've done. Here, what we want to do, so you just saw dry cabbage, we put the salt in and I'm going to massage this for a little bit. And why? Because I want to draw the moisture out of the cabbage. See how it's already getting a lot wetter? I want to draw a lot of moisture. And then I'm just going to kind of let this one go ahead and sit. So as you can see, hear that? The liquid is coming out and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I did not add any liquid. So see the liquid starting to form here? I don't know that one tablespoon was the perfect amount. So what's going to happen is I'm going to let this sit. The salt is going to continue to work on this cabbage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work it again after I'm done. And I will be back at this. And, and when I'm done massaging the next time, I will check the saltiness of it. It needs to be pretty salty. So now I'm going to chop up by hand the rest of this cabbage. I have all of the cabbage shredded now. So you can see here I have two very large bowls of the hand carved slaw and I have a tablespoon of salt in each of the bowls. See that? And this is um, Himalayan sea salt and I have a tablespoon over here. So, and then this is my other slaw that is very pretty fine. 
So the next step is I'm going to mash up the slaw and get this salt working on the cabbage. So here is a bowl of kraut that I've added the salt to and I've been wringing out and I'm still working on it. I did put the caraway seeds in here and you see it's getting wetter and wetter and see how there's liquid here at the bottom? That's what you want to see. You want to see liquid at the bottom. And then when you load the cabbage into the jar, you're going to really press that down so that that liquid comes up to the surface as much as possible. And in the beginning, you're going to check it every day because um, it's going to release carbon dioxide, you know, which is a gas. And you have to release that gas. So I have to take the lids off of these jars. Every day, water's going to be bubbling up. You know, this juice that's all coming from the cabbage is going to be bubbling up. And then at some point, that bubbling is going to stop. And then it's really a matter of letting it sit as long as you would like it to sit. I'll definitely show you what checking the jars looks like. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, I mean, this is like, this is a killer. You can use a meat mallet, which I have done before. You know, you can do like this. It can be, get kind of splattery. Give your hands a break. Get your husband involved, your kids involved. You know, if you have a lot of stress, if you feel like you need to work out some stress in your life, well, you know, making sauerkraut could be an amazing way, you know, just grinding out. You just really want to get as much liquid. So all the liquid that's in the cabbage, you pretty much, you want to try to get it out. Salted cabbage juice is what's really going to preserve this and turn this into a tasty sauerkraut. Okay, I think I'm about all I got left in me here. So I'm going to load this last jar. I'm just going to Load it in here. I'm pushing that liquid up towards the top. See how much it was up at the top, and look how much I pushed that down. Yeah, we're getting there. It's coming along one way or another. So now I want to, and I did put caraway seeds. I decided just to put it in all of them. It really, I think it did some kind of preserving. There's something, I haven't studied caraway seed, um, but I, I felt like it provided a nice flavor and it did something really beneficial for the sauerkraut. Okay, so I am just trying to get all this cabbage. See that liquid that's on the top? Oh, that's a really good sign. There's actually more liquid on this one. I worked it more than I did the others. I hope I don't regret that I didn't work on the others more. That's what I remember. So now I'm just wiping the jar off. I'm going to do a better job on the outside. But right now I just want to, I, um, I just take paper towel, you know. And then I also wipe the inside because I want to actually have. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like. Ooh, did you hear that? There was a lot of pressure there. This is the only jar. See the smoke coming out? I don't know if you can see that. You can see the gases being released. Okay, I'm going to smell it. It smells like cabbage. Now, some of this cabbage on the top is turning brown. I'm going to take that off. And I'm going to... Um, and then I'm going to quickly get this lid back on. I'm going to push it back down. So I have four jars that looks like this. I, I that look like this. I'm sorry, and I'm just showing you one. This is the only one that really popped. So I saved this one till last, thinking that you would hear the gas being released. So I have to keep taking this lid off and checking on it until it does not pop like that anymore. And then at that point, I will only take it off when I feel like I might be ready to test it. So. Um, that's what I'm going for again, I'm not sure if I'm going to get there, but I want to get all the brown off. And then I'm just using my Vitamix plunger to just push it back down underneath the water. I'm doing my best to get more water to come up. 
if you can see that or not. See how I'm pushing? It's still bubbling, so there's still gas. And so this, the other two jars, I'm not going to be doing every day because they're not they're not uh, popping like this one is. And so I'm going to do this one every day until it stops the popping. And then I want to do it a lot less often. And I just want to get it underneath there. Try to get it as much underneath the liquid as I can. Some people use weights to weight it down. I had some weights, but they really weren't a good size for this size jar. So now what I'm doing is just wiping out, trying to pull out any little browner pieces. And we'll see, hopefully, hopefully at least three out of these four will turn out. So I'm going to just put this back into my cabinet in a dark, dry place, and then I will check it again. Here is a last look at my four jars of sauerkraut. So as you can see, there's not a lot of liquid on the top. And when I made them the last time, you could see liquid on the top. Um, but I, I kept pressing this down and down. So there is a lot of liquid. It's saturated um, in here. So these two jars are pretty much identical. Um, this one here, I grated more finely. And then this one has this uh, gas releasing lid on it. So this one I haven't really opened. There is some brown on the top and I will be taking that off when I go to eat this. Um, I'm going to let it sit, you know, it's been two and a half weeks. So we still, you know, I want to get to the six week mark before I'm going to, you know, take this out and try it. And at that point, if I don't love this, I'm going to make some more. And I may even just make some more anyway because I know we could go through this pretty quickly. This one was more finely grated, so I may check this sooner because the more finely it's uh, grated, the more quickly it's probably going to get done. And I'll go ahead and I'm just going to like take off the outer rings, and if there is gas and pressure in there, you'll hear it. Okay, I didn't hear anything in that one. Didn't hear anything in that one. Oh, maybe this one's got some here. No, I didn't. Oh, a little tiny bit. Okay, little, did you hear that? Little tiny bit. This one I'm not because this is a gas releasing lid. So with that, like these, I don't even need to really open again until the six weeks are up. I think it's probably fine. I'll probably do it maybe once a week. And until I get to the six weeks mark. And so I will do another video when I go to taste these. Thanks so much for joining me today in this making sauerkraut video. Please like and subscribe to this channel. Share this video. If you are discovering that the ketogenic lifestyle and the intermittent fasting lifestyle have really improved your health, it would be great to get more people on this train to better health. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.